Hello everybody, welcome to Aquarium. My name is Michal Ali and today we're going to be planting this vivarium. It's uh, the one that we did in our previous video. Uh, I've made a selection of uh, plants here that we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, while we're placing them in the tank itself. So hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm about to water this tank. It's uh, very, very dry and I don't want the plants to get shocked. I don't want their roots to get shocked when I plant them uh, in the media or up against the background from how dry it is. So I'm going to make sure I douse it really, really well. And I'm not sure if anybody has noticed, but I did go ahead and add an extra piece that wasn't there when I did the video of the build. This piece of uh, cork bark tube is there, not only as extra areas for me to plant on, but I did it mostly for the frogs because I have it in other tanks and they really like to hide inside the hollow inside. So uh, that's what that piece is there for anyways. Uh, what I just poured in the tank and what I have here in this container is uh, springtails. Uh, they're tiny little insects that are detrivores. They basically are eating decaying plant matter and mold, fungus, etc. So they're very good uh, as a cleanup crew for our tanks. They do all the free work. They're really good hard workers. And you basically won't see them once you put them in there. Uh, and once in a while it's good to toss in a bit of food for them to make sure that their populations don't crash. They're also a wonderful food source for uh, baby frogs and even some adult frogs. So those are the springtails and we're also now going to add some isopods. Uh, what I have here are some isopods. Uh, this particular variety are called dairy cows, which I think is a hilarious name, but uh, kind of suits them a little bit with the black and white coloration. Uh, I find them to be very, a little bit faster than normal uh, and also uh, produce well. I, I like the look of them. And we're going to add a few of them to the tank itself and hopefully they will go ahead and reproduce and maintain a, a stable population within the tank themselves. So uh, free janitors. Okay, so the first plant that I'm going to go ahead and put in this tank is this beautiful Norgelia. I don't have the actual species name, but it was just too pretty for me to leave behind. And not only is it pretty, but it's big enough and has really good water holding uh, capability. So the frogs are, I, I assume, are going to really put this to good use. Uh, and it also does have a pup or a baby that is over here. So when I'm mounting it, I will take that into mind, make sure that this baby has room to grow out and become big like its mama. And also, if you can see some of the roots, I'm just going to go ahead and trim them up off with a pair of scissors over here because the Norgelias, uh, they don't really use their roots for anything much other than anchoring themselves. So by cutting them, I'm not really doing much damage to the plant itself. It's just going to help me better position it, better put that stem inside or in that nook or cranny that I need to put it in. So sometimes I don't find a nook or a crevice to shove a bromeliad stem in or a plant of any sign. And so I end up using this wire over here. I just cut it to length uh, appropriate for whatever it is I need to. I try to cut it at an angle to make it sharp and just bend it into a staple shape or a U shape. And that's what I use to pin my plant up against the background, whether it's the foam background or whether it's the cork bark itself. So that's what I'm gonna have to do with this bromeliad over here. Very cute Norgelia. It's a Skotak hybrid called Norgelia gizmo. And this tiny little guy is also producing a baby, believe it or not, right over here. So when I do mount him, I'm going to take that into account and make sure that there's room for this baby to, to grow out and then it's not being too tight to a piece of wood or something. Okay, gizmo in. Put in my gizmo. Another Skotak hybrid, another Norgelia called the uh, Norgelia UFO. He does have these eccentric names for his, which I, I find quite delightful, but sometimes they are a little wacky. 
Anyway, beautiful, got a really deep purple coloration to it. I'm gonna want this a little bit higher to the top so it doesn't lose its coloration. So try to find it a nice little crevice to stick it in. Okay, so I have here a very beautiful uh, Earth star, commonly known, or Cryptanthus. Very closely related to the Neurogiliad. It is a bromeliad, but a terrestrial bromeliad, not an epiphytic one like the Tillandias and the Neurogiliad. So we're going to plant this one in the ground area. Another Neurogilia that I picked for this tank. I uh, don't have the actual species name, but I picked it because uh, I, I can't just do all small little ones. We need a few bigger ones with water holding capacity where the frogs can actually use them to, to lay their eggs and rear their babies in, in my case. So uh, one more good size one going in there and then uh, maybe another small one just for looks, you know. One more Scotac hybrid, just because I love them. This one, Norgilia Balboa. Love the striping on it. Likes the higher light to keep those stripes really, really nice and vivid. So I'm going to try to find a, a nice spot up closer to the lights where I can shove this stem in without needing a pin. But if I need a pin, then I'll go ahead and use one. Yes, that's very nice. I have here a nice little miniature orchid. It's a Scaphosepalum species. Exactly what species it is, I'm not sure again. This orchid unfortunately fell uh, in one of my grow tents behind something and I discovered it. And I really don't know how long it had been over there, but I figured, okay, uh, since I can't find a tag, I could probably use it inside this build. And that's what I'm going to do. It likes lower light, so it's going to go a little bit towards the, the bottom. Doesn't like it too intense of a light. Okay, I have here a little division of a plant called Pilonia repens. Makes a carpet, a mat, and also can climb. So what I'm gonna do is uh, basically plant this where it gets a chance to kind of spread out on the ground section, but also I will have a piece of it leaning on the background in the hopes that it starts to climb over there and shingle on that background a little bit. So let's get to it. I have here a cute little fern, uh, Elaphoglossum lanceolatum. Uh, likes the lower light with the high humidity, so again, very good candidate for these terrariums. Doesn't get overly big, has a really nice, like, iridescent blue tinge on it. So I'm going to put this, like, in the bottom corner of the tank over there. I have here a begonia, begonia thelma, to be more specific. Uh, very nice, compact, growing begonia, great for the terrariums, it'll kind of make a mad cram or like ramble a little bit. Also will climb, I've seen it climb right up on the glass itself and can tolerate all kinds of conditions, the lower light, the higher light. Um, I really like it, great, great. Has cute little flowers as well. So I'm gonna put this on the other side, on the right side of the tank to just kind of and hopefully uh, have it fill in that area and have lots of hiding spots for my frogs to be in. Look at this little cutie. It's called Elaphoglossum peltatum. It's uh, another fern. Likes the lower light conditions uh, with the high humidity. I'm going to try to put this on one of those pieces of driftwood over there where it's covered a little bit by the other plants and won't get too much intense light on it. Very, very cute. A little bit of a slower grow, very slow to establish. But uh, again, that's what I'm looking for inside these uh, vivariums. I don't want anything that's going to quickly fill in my tank and I have to work hard at trimming it to maintain the look that I want. So, Elaphoglossa. Okay, I got a cluster of air plants here, Tillandias. Uh, this one's called Tillandia yonantha van heningia, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, grows a, a little bit more elongated and forms nice clusters that are nicely tight together and has very, very cute flower. It's a very common colors of the Tillandia flower, but I, I find it very pretty and very, so all in all, uh, really good vivarium candidate. 
does like the higher light. I got here one of my favorite miniature orchids of all time. It's in the Pleurothallid family. It's an orchid called uh, Lepenthes, Lepenthes caladiction. And uh, likes the, again, lower intermediate light conditions. So not up too high where it's blasted with light all the time. And uh, does not like to dry out too long. But at the same time, I want it covered from, from misters in case uh, the leaves get wet too. Because they don't like their leaves being wet all the time. So anyways, I'm going to pick a spot based on that. So let's go ahead. And I am, it, it, it's already, the, the plant is already grown into its mount. So for something this delicate, I'm not going to go ahead and take the chance of removing it from the mount. I'm just going to go ahead and mount it on the background, on the mount that it comes in. Just like this. Okay, another little cute miniature orchid. This one is called, uh, it used to be called Pleurothallids grobii. Now it's called Speculina grobii. And this is the small form of it. There is another form of it that has bigger, quite, quite much bigger leaves. Uh, very hardy, really good subject again for the terrarium. Puts out sprays of small little yellow flowers. A, a really nice display when they do flower. And uh, they tend to flower uh, quite a, many times throughout the year. So, uh, very rewarding little plant, very rewarding, I would say. Another cute miniature, this time a Dendrobium, uh, Dendrobium Cuthbertonii. And I believe this is the red flowered one. Uh, likes it brighter, so this one's going to go higher up. Doesn't like to be wet all the time, so not only do I want it in, under brighter light, but I do want it in a place that it gets a chance to dry up fairly well in between watering. So gonna keep that in mind with this little guy. Beautiful flowers though, beautiful. Okay, got a cute plant here. Uh, interesting because it's an intergeneric hybrid, meaning two different genuses, uh, Parsia, Picea, Parsia hypocertiflora, I believe, and Especia, Especia cupriata. So a Parsia and an Especia were crossed together to produce this beautiful plant. Got a lovely, like velvety, hairy texture to it. Uh, doesn't get crazy big, but it's very easy to trim back, and it's not invasive in a in a in a harmful way. I find. So I'm just going to take a small piece of it and put it in my ground section, and hope that it spreads out nicely for me in the tank. Okay, so I have here some Peperomia prostrata, commonly known as the string of turtles. Uh, this one is great. I mean, it can tolerate almost any condition, really, it's just not sopping wet. So, uh, and, and grows differently depending on the amount of light and the amount of water that you give it. So I'm going to take some and put a little bit of moss underneath it, and I'm going to put it on the higher section of, of my tank and hoping that it will cascade down a little bit and spread on the top section. And I'm also going to take a smaller chunks of it and maybe spread them out in other sections of the tank itself. Peperomia prostrata, beautiful, great, great vivarium plant. Okay, got a, got a couple of cuttings of this really pretty Peperomia versifalti, I believe. Now I have a, behind that big piece of cork, there's an indentation. It's got a place almost like a pot. It's going to allow me to get some uh, moss and make a nice, uh, basically makeshift pot of moss for the roots of this plant to establish and just kind of tuck it away behind there until this plant gets a, a chance to establish and spread out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and utilize that space for this peperomia. I have here a little mini or compact philodendron called philodendron lupinum. Just beautiful, beautiful philodendron, like velvety leaves. The underside is purple, reddish kind of tinge to it. Uh, doesn't get too big, a uh, good climber. So it's got a lot going on for it and a really good addition to this uh, vivarium. I'm gonna put it in the right hand corner on the ground section, hoping that it climbs the wall and starts to fill in more on that side and up towards the top. I'm uh, very excited to have this one and uh, watch it grow. Looping them. I have some more Peperomia prostrata. This time, just a slightly different uh, variety of it. This is the cup leaf. 
the leaves are a little bit uh, thinner on this guy, not quite as thick as the other uh, clone that I have. And it uh, tends to climb upwards or just scramble a little bit more than the other one as well. Uh, gonna put this kind of on the ground, it's on the ground section towards the center and just hoping that it makes a nice full mat in that area. Okay, for strata. Ta-da! Finished product. So here we go. Here's the finished vivarium. All done. Now it just needs to grow in and fill out a little bit more over the next few weeks. Uh, probably going to wait a good um, month or so before I put the frogs in there just to make sure that everything has established properly. Uh, you can see we got plants up high here for the highlight area, some plants in the medium light and also our ground cover. Uh, it's okay if not everything works out as planned. You get to learn a few things as you're going and maybe modify a few things here or there. Uh, but that's what makes this fun. I hope uh, you, this was informative. Please like us and follow on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, the whole social media works. And we'll see you on the next video.